So there are, as I mentioned to you a little earlier, there are two ways of looking at matrices. The first is that it is a rectangular array of scalars. That's a simple way to introduce matrices. That's why I started with that definition. But as I mentioned, the more useful uh, uh, viewpoint is that it represents a linear transformation between two vector spaces. So in order to understand that, we need to know what a vector space is, and that's what I'm going to define next. Um, are there any questions so far? Uh, sir, uh, you, other... said, uh, uh, you said uh, we should perceive matrix multiplication as a linear transform. So, I mean, in lower dimension, it's very easy to say that, I mean, when we do a linear transformation, uh, what happens? But in higher dimension, I mean, how should we ensure that this is a linear transform? Can you uh, repeat your question, please? Yes, sir. I was saying that uh, you said that, I mean, uh, matrix multiplication we can perceive as a linear transformation, right? Yes. So uh, I, I I was asking that uh, how can we I mean visualize it? Like in lower dimension, it's very easy to see that this is a linear transform, but in higher yes. dimension, let's say going from n to n, how can we prove it? Yeah. Can see? Yeah. So it, it turns out I mean that uh, we cannot visualize more than three dimensions. So if it's two dimensions or three dimensions, I can kind of draw things or. I can show you what happens in three dimensions, and so you can visualize it. But there is no hope of visualizing a linear transform from, say, six-dimensional space to eight-dimensional space, or 16-dimensional space down to 14-dimensional space, and things like that. You cannot visualize it. So it's a mathematical construction, and you have to take it as such. But it is that is what it is doing. It is it's taking a vector from. 14 dimensional space and then mapping it to say 23 dimensional space, something like that. So that's what it is doing. You cannot visualize it. So I wanted to understand, I mean, I mean how, what does it distinguish that it is a linear transform and it is a non-linear transform? So how can we distinguish between these two transforms? Okay, so yeah. this, uh, this refers to how do we define linearity? Okay, so I'll come to that uh, in a little bit. Um, for that, I need to, to understand this concept of vector spaces and how we define a linear transform between vector spaces. Okay. 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 So you do need to understand, we, we have to cover vector spaces before I can formally define what a linear transform is. But for now, I'm just saying that uh, there are two ways to visualize or view matrices. One is a rectangular array of scalars. The other is that a matrix represents a linear transform between a pair of vector spaces. And uh, the, uh, the key point is that any linear transform, so I need to define vector spaces. So there is an object which is called a vector space. And if I define two vector spaces and uh, if I define a linear transform between these two vector spaces, that can be represented as one and only one matrix. So there is a unique mapping or a one-to-one -one mapping between linear transformations between two vector spaces and the space of matrices. Okay, so we'll come to that um, uh, shortly. Okay, so let's start with uh, vector spaces. So in order to define a vector space, we have to start with a field. A field is a set of scalars, and for the purpose of this course, we are only going to essentially focus on uh, real or complex field. So that is the set of all real numbers or the set of all complex numbers. So in the back of your mind, even though I write F here, think of it as a shorthand notation to say it's either real or it's complex. It's a set of scalars with two operations defined on it, plus and dot and it's closed under plus and dot. That is, you take any two scalars and add them together, you'll get another scalar which belongs to this field F, and you take any two scalars and multiply them together, that's this dot symbol, uh, then you'll get another element that belongs to this field F. Both plus and dot are associative and commutative. There exists an identity element, both for addition and multiplication. Um, and every element has an additive inverse. So given any A belonging to F, there is a minus A which also belongs to F. Uh, 
and all elements except the additive identity, which is typically denoted by zero, have a multiplicative inverse and multiplication is distributive over addition. Again, this is a very uh, formal sounding definition, but uh, like I said, for the purposes of this course, just keep in mind that we are thinking about the real line or the complex plane and the usual multiplication defined in the real line or the complex plane or multiplication of complex numbers. So there's nothing new here, but um, there is a formal way to uh, define these things. I'm not going to deal with these too much, but this is uh, I, I put these down mainly for the sake of completeness so that you know where these things come from. Now uh, a vector space. A vector space I'm going to use either S or capital capital S or capital D or capital V to denote a vector space. It's defined over a field F and it satisfies two core properties. If I take X and Y belonging to this vector space S, then their sum X plus Y also belongs to this vector space S. And this sum is defined as element wise addition. If I take X belonging to this vector space S and any C belonging to this field F, then C times X also belongs to S. And the scalar multiplication is defined as multiplying every entry of this um, X. And these elements of S are called vectors. And addition and multiplication, which are used here, satisfy some a set of eight actions, which I'm not going to list here. But again, for the purposes of this course, let's just think of it as element wise addition and multiplying every entry of this vector X by this scalar. So this X plus Y as defined here is actually taking a simple linear combination of these two vectors X and Y. A more general linear combination, if you are given vectors V1 through Vn in uh, each Vi belonging to R to the M, this is the M dimensional real space. That is a set of vectors with M real valued entries in them. And I is one to N, those are the N set of vectors. And if you're given scalars, I equal to one to N C I. Then if I define a vector Y, which is equal to the summation I going from one to N, C I times V I, that is called a linear combination of these vectors V1 through Vn. We also write it often by stacking these vectors V1 to Vn as a matrix. Of, then this matrix will be of size M by N because each of these vectors are M dimensional vectors. And we stack the entries of the elements of this Ci as a, as a column vector C1 through Cn, so this is n by 1. And when you take this product of these, this matrix vector product as I defined earlier, then that's exactly the same as doing summation i equal to 1 to n, Ci times Vi. The moment we define um, linear combinations, we can define linear independence. So a set of vectors V1 through Vn are linearly independent when summation i equal to 1 to n c i v i equals 0 if and only if c1 equals c2 equals etc equals c n equals 0. It's important to take a minute and uh, digest uh, this definition. Uh, again, this is something you would have seen in your undergraduate uh, course, but um, one important thing I want to point out here is the if and only if condition. The if part is trivial here. Of course, if C1, C2 up to Cn are equal to zero, then summation Ci Vi is always going to be equal to zero. Zero times a vector is a zero vector. And so when you add up all the zero vectors, you will get another zero vector. This is a zero vector here. So the if part is trivial. So really the crux of this definition lies in the only if part. That is, there is no other linear combination of these vectors V1 to Vn that you can take and obtain the zero vector. So graphically, the way to think about it is if I have a vector V1 like this, another vector V2 like this, 
then can I take a linear combination? Scale this by C1, scale this by C2, add them together and then end up at the origin. Get the 0, 0 vector. If I can do that, then these two vectors are linearly independent. If not, they are linearly dependent. It turns out that these two vectors are linearly independent and this is um, this is something that should be obvious to you. And instead, if I take three vectors like this, now it turns out that I can always find a non-trivial linear combination of these three vectors such that I will end up at the origin. So three vectors in the two-dimensional plane are always going to be linearly dependent. And so we say that a set of vectors are linearly dependent if they are not linearly independent. Again, continuing with the theme of linear combinations, the span of a set of vectors V1 through Vn is the set of all Ys which can be written as linear combinations of these V1 to Vn. It turns out that this is a vector space and again, this is something that you can try to show. It's, it's very easy to show this. The point is basically that if you take two vectors belonging to span of V1 to Vn, then the first vector can be written as a linear combination of Vi like this. And the second vector can also be written as a linear combination of these vectors. And therefore their sum, so if it was, if the two vectors were Y1 and Y2, Y1 plus Y2 can be written as the sum of these uh, vectors with different coefficients Ci. And therefore that also lies in span of V1 to Vn. And similarly, if you take, if you scale a vector y by some alpha, then that's the same as scaling each of these coefficients by the same factor alpha. And therefore, alpha times y can also be written as a linear combination of these vectors, and it belongs to the span. So it satisfies the two properties we said that a vector space should satisfy. And so the span of a set of vectors is, is actually a vector space. A related, um, a related uh, uh, object is the range space of a matrix A, which is the set of all Ys, which can be written as linear combinations of the columns of A. So Y can be written as A times C for some C in R to the N. This is also a vector space. So essentially, the span of V1 to Vn is the same as the range space of a matrix whose columns are V1 to Vn. And the range space of a matrix is the same as the span of its columns. A subspace of a vector space is basically a subset of a vector space. So you take a vector space and you throw out some of the vectors and you retain the others, but it should satisfy a property that this subset of vectors is itself a vector space over the same field. When it does that, then we call it a subspace. So for example, if I take R2, then the set of all vectors Y belonging to R2 such that Y2 equals zero. That is the second entry of Y is equal to zero. This is a subspace. Clearly, if I take two vectors whose second entry is zero and I add them together, the second entry cannot suddenly become non-zero. And so that also belongs to this set. And if I take a Y which belongs to the set and I scale it by some alpha, then this, the first entry will get scaled by alpha, but the second entry which is zero will remain equal to zero. So that will also lie in this subspace. <coughs> We say that a set of vectors V1 to Vn span a vector space S if the span of V1 to Vn is equal to this vector space S. Sir, uh, can you please uh, uh, once again elaborate on the subspace uh, part? So a subspace is nothing but a, a subset of the vectors in a vector space with the additional property that it should itself be a vector space. Okay, sir. 
Okay, and a vector <laughs> space is one which satisfies those two properties that I showed you earlier. Yes, sir. Okay, the, the sum of two vectors in a vector space should be in the vector space. And scaling a vector by a scalar, you should say you should continue to live in that vector space. You can never yes. leave. Yes. Okay, I often joke if they have a physical class, I often joke that vector spaces are like Hotel California. You can never leave. Whatever you do, these vectors, however they interact with each other, you will always stay in that vector space. Okay, so if the, if V1 to Vn span a vector space, then span of V1 to Vn is equal to the set S, this vector space S. In other words, any vector in this vector space can be written as a linear combination of V1 to Vn. And any linear combination of V1 to Vn is lying in this space. So this is another small point I want to make about, see the span of V1 to Vn is a set of vectors and S is also a set of vectors. And when you want to say two sets are equal, that is equivalent to saying if I take any vector in S that belongs to span of V1 to Vn. And likewise, if I take any vector which belongs to span of V1 to Vn that lies in this set S. So they are equal. When this happens, we call V1 to Vn as a spanning set. Okay, of course, it means, like I said, this equality means that every vector in S can be expressed as a linear combination of V1 through Vn. Okay, so I uh, I think we, we have reached here. And uh, the next concept I want to discuss is that of a basis, um, which we will do on Wednesday. Any um, any more questions before we close the class? Uh, sir, can you please explain this range space once again? The range space is the same as the span. The range space of a matrix A is the same as the span of the columns of A. And mathematically, it's defined like this. It's actually the same as this definition here. To say that y is in R to the m, where y can be written as a linear combination of vi, is the same as saying that y is equal to a times c, where c is a vector in R to the n. It has n entries. It has c1 to cn as its entries. OK. Is it equivalent to the column space of the matrix? Yes. So that's a good point. This is also called the column space. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, could you explain a uh, span? So you take two vectors, okay, or in this case, as defined here, where did I define it? Here. Span is the set of all linear combinations of these vectors, V1 to Vn. So in, in other words, if I take just to, again, I'm trying to avoid going to one and two dimensions because like I said, linear algebra is not limited to one or two dimensions, but that's all I can show you here on a, on a whiteboard. But if I take only one vector in two dimensional space, and I ask, what is its span? It's basically this line going through the origin. Okay, that's that's all the vectors that you can represent as a linear combination of this one vector here. But if I take two vectors in the two-dimensional space, then their span is actually the whole plane, as long as these two vectors are linearly independent. By taking different linear combinations of this, I can span the entire two-dimensional space. If I take two vectors in three dimensional space, and let's say I take one vector here and another vector here, then these two vectors in this three dimensional space, but they will not span the entire three dimensional space. Okay, it's the set of all points that are reachable by taking a linear combination or taking the sum of scaled versions of the two vectors. Uh, sir, could you repeat the plane part? Your voice was not audible for a brief moment. Yeah, so all I was saying is that if I take 
So if anybody is able to see the three dimensional plane, three dimensional axis that I've drawn, I've drawn the X, Y, Z axis. Yes. When you are able to see it, please confirm. Yes, X, Y, Z. Yeah. So if I take two vectors, one vector along the X axis, another vector along the Y axis, you can see that if I take all possible linear combinations of these two vectors, I will span the two dimensional plane defined by the X and Y axis. There will be now no component in the Z direction. So it will span a two dimensional subspace of the three dimensional space. OK, and that is true. Even if I take any two non uh, coincidental vectors in the X, Y plane, together they will span the entire X, Y plane. But they will never have any component along the Z direction. Every vector I take, which is a scaled version of the first vector, will not will have a zero as its Z component. So specifically, if I take V1 equal to say V11, V12, zero, and I take V2 equal to V21, V22, 0. It can't be 0, 1, and 1, 0. Any linear combination I take of these two vectors. C2, V2 will always be of the form. V11 plus C2, V21. C1, V12 plus C2, V12, V22 and 0. So this third component will always be 0. So it will uh, always lie in the XY plane. Sir, we can't see what you're writing. It will come in a minute. Yes, it's yes, sir. OK, so V1 and V2 span the XY plane. Uh, so Vishnu has his hand raised. Yeah, Vishnu, go ahead. Sir. Sir, earlier, can you can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, the thing is, uh, earlier you said that vectors can be represented as uh, columns of uh, matrix, right? Sir, vectors the can columns be. Columns of a matrix are vectors. Yeah, columns of a matrix are vectors, right? So yes. is this uh, like, uh, like is it is it uh, compulsory to use columns or can you use rows also? Yes, so. Um, but in there is there, there, it is mentioned as columns, right? Mostly. Yeah, so that's where they say, you know, there are three types of people in this world. Um, okay. The kind who think of vectors as column vectors, the kind who think of vectors as row vectors. OK, so <laughs> now there was a bit of a joke, but uh, essentially a vector when as stated could be a column vector or a row vector. The point is one of its diamond, mean, it is a when you say a vector, we are thinking of a one dimensional vector. That is, it has one dimension, which is um, uh, where you have, say, n elements, and uh, it's a string of entries written in, along that dimension. You can represent it either as a row or as a column. And in fact, we'll use both depending on the convenience. Um, but definitely, uh, from, uh, you know, it is true that. Um, Vectors are often, it's most common to think of vectors as column vectors. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. So in fact, uh, if I go back here in my definition of matrix multiplication, I used both. I used a row vector and I used a column vector. Sir, what are the third kind of people? That's the joke. <laughs> okay.
सर वन मोर थिंग यस सर लाइक यूर सर मैट्रिक्स इज लाइक लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन बिटवीन टू वेक्टर स्पेसेस राइट लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन राइट यस सर लाइक सर वी हैव मैट्रिक्स लाइक एम बाय एम राइट एम बाय एम और समथिंग लाइक दैट एम बाय एम ओके या एम बाय एन और समथिंग बट एम बाय एन ओके एम बाय एम बाय एन लाइक देयर आर थ्री राइट टेंसर्स can so i'm not discussing tensors just yet okay that tensors okay okay thanks matrix uh, by definition in this course is going to be of two there are going to be two two parts to it m by n that's it okay so okay. i will not be at at least in the for the most of the course will not have okay okay m by n by n. yeah thank you i need another uh, another course to teach uh, tensor uh, mathematics okay so if there are no further questions we'll stop here uh, uh, thanks for attending um sir ashish has a question yeah go ahead please uh, hello sir uh, in this last example where you explained uh, the two dimensional vectors along uh, the x x x and y so here we took these two vectors along the axis x and y but if we take uh, these two vectors along a certain plane i mean one vector along x y plane and one vector along some other plane say it uh, y, x y or y z plane then would it be three dimension would it would be able to span the three dimensional space hmm what do you think uh, sir i guess we must uh, have uh, another vector to span three dimensional space precisely so that is one of the things that uh, we will show which is that you cannot span three dimensional space using just two vectors no matter how you choose those two vectors okay if i okay. take two three dimensional vectors okay i can always find a vector in three dimensional space which cannot be reached as a linear combination of these two vectors it makes intuitive sense right because yes. if i take the three dimensional space like this it's hard for me to draw it here but if i take some vector like this another vector pointing in some other direction these two guys together define a plane okay yes and sir. it's only guys only vectors that sit in this plane that i can reach by taking linear combinations there is always going to be a perpendicular direction which is 90 degrees to both these guys and anything that sits in this 90 degree direction cannot be reached by taking linear combinations of these two vectors yes sir okay okay sir thank you welcome Okay so um I guess we'll stop here for today